I just told Jacob that the choir looks so much better. Just a few ladies in the choir makes it look so much better than it did last week. But uh, I know they're not as scared today. The men are not near as scared today as they were last week either. They got some good help. Um, good to be here this morning with you. We are so excited to be at Mount Olive. If you're our guest today, we want you to take a flap off your bulletin or the card in a pew near you and just fill it out and let us know that you're here with us today. Um, and we want to know who you are. We want to get back with you very soon and tell you how excited we are that you're here. So please do that for us if you don't mind. We do got a few announcements. Um, don't forget that this next Sunday morning, Brother Anthony Baggett uh, will be coming. Uh, he's uh, uh, the prospect for music minister position. He'll be leading a trial service next Sunday morning. And there'll be a vote right after the service. There are some yellow sheets. Of, I think it's just yellow. I'm colorblind. It could be green. I'm not sure. But lime green, they said. So I was colorblind. But uh, there's some of this color piece of paper around. It's got his information and things. If you want one, um, they're, they're floating around. You might already have one. But if you don't, I know there's some back here in the back. You can grab one on the way out this morning. I think those are blue, possibly. They could be another color as well. So, but anyway, um, please get one of those. It kind of tells you a little bit about him. A couple other announcements this, this, this morning is there. Don't forget, ladies, we got a Tuesday night Bible study at 6 o'clock and also a Thursday morning Bible study at 10 o'clock that are going on. If you want to be a part of those, um, that they would love for you to be a part of that. Please see Miss Ernestine or, or uh, Miss Judy. They can get you um, involved in that. Also, this week is going to be Discipleship Now weekend. We're going to have that on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to have three large group Bible studies. We'll have four small devotion times and four small group the uh, Bible study times, and uh, um, it's going to be a lot of time of spiritual growth, and we want you to do two things for us. We want you to pray for us, first of all, and pray over that this week. Put that at the top of your prayer list, and just pray over those students that will be coming, those college students that will be coming to lead. And then lastly, we want you to participate in some way. If there's any way that you can help, um, I know there's a lot of people that's already been asked to help, but there are going to be a lot of ways you can help. And uh, so if you can help in any way, please come see me, and I'm going to get you signed up in some form or fashion in how you can help us this week. Uh, one of the ways you can help us is by helping us with food. Um, of course, we've got to feed all those young people, and uh, we need some help with that. Miss Karen Watson has set a sign-up sheet in the Sunday school window of different things that we need and different helps in food preparation for the week so if you can help in any way that sign up sheet is in the Sunday school office just go by sign up but you'll be willing to help and bring and that would be a great help to us thank you so much for your help that I know you're going to go ahead and do also um, there's a note in here from Miss Helen if, if you're not receiving the Baptist record and would like to receive it please see Miss Helen she'll get you on the list and uh, uh, there's also this next Monday Monday week from tomorrow there's a go tell crusade organizational meeting it's at Monday, February the 12th, and if you want to go to that, that there's a ticket required to get in, but we have those tickets to see uh, Miss Amanda Frederick and uh, see our Sterling and Angie, and they will get you um, signed up, get you a ticket, no problem at all, so just see them this morning. Um, and the last thing is our Valentine's Banquet. Our Valentine's Banquet is coming up um, in a week and a half. And uh, there are sign-up sheets all around their church. I know I've, I've counted off probably close to 75, 80 people signed up, if not more. And uh, uh, what we're going to have is going to have, we're going to grill steaks and grill chicken. If you want either one of those, just come to find that sheet. There's one right here in front of me. Come find that sheet. Sign up what you would like to have. And uh, if you want a steak, just sign up how you would like it cooked. And, uh, and then be here about 6 o'clock on that Wednesday night for a nice time of fellowship. Uh, the men are going to be cooking. The youth are going to be serving. You just come and enjoy yourself and enjoy your family. So do that for us. Um, and, and that's going to happen on February the 14th. And then I got a couple of just little messages this morning. One is in, in, the, in the form of a note that Miss Helen received this week to our church um, from Miss Linda Hill. Um, she's now in Lesson, Kentucky. But she sent a note to the church just telling everybody that she loved and missed them and said that she's looking for a church that loves as much as Mount Olive does. So that's definitely a, a, a nice thing to say about our church. And then a, I got a few prayer requests this morning as well. Um, please put Robbie Michael, that's a friend of Brett and Amy Tice, um, has cancer and had a bad report this week. Put that, fam um, that him and that family on your prayer list. Ricky Caldwell. And also Jacob Robinson, that's Eddie Cagle's grandson, had a wreck. And uh, please be in prayer for him. I think maybe surgery tomorrow, so y'all be in prayer for him as well. Let's bow for a word of prayer now, please. Father God, we do thank you so much for this, this, this opportunity to be here this morning. God, we thank you for uh, Jesus Christ. Um, God, we thank you so much that we have an opportunity to know and love you through, through Jesus' death on the cross, God. Because of his great sacrifice, we can be in a relationship with you. And God, I, I thank you, God, that... 
And because of that, we can meet here this morning and we can sing glorious praises to you, God. We can worship you through the studying and preaching of your word, God. We can worship you through fellowship times and all those things, God. But this morning, may we not forget, may we not miss out on the opportunity to worship you in this moment. God, I pray that you just fill us up this morning and I pray that we respond to you. Respond how you want us to respond, God. God, I pray for everything you have going on in our church coming forward. God, there's so many things, so many opportunities, so many um, possibilities. But God, we just pray that you would be in every one of them. And we pray that you would just move your hand through them. And God, that we would again respond, that we would be changed and encouraged by you, Father. I pray for these on our prayer list, God. I pray that these that are mentioned and also these that are not. God, we just pray that your, your healing hand will be on those families, God. We pray that your comfort... Um, your touch, your hug, your love, God, would be in those situations. And we'll pray that you would even use us as a body of believers, God, to, to be there for them. And God, I also pray for those on our prayer list that are not mentioned this morning. God, the ones that are missed that need prayer, that are hurting and down and out and in rough times. God, we just pray that you'd be with them. And God, we pray that our church, that this body of believers here on this hill, God, would be compassionate to those around us. Help us to love others so much that we want to tell them about you and your son. And God, we, Jesus Christ wants to be, is the first thing off of our lips. And as we love and show that, God, may they see your, your son, your great love for us, that you did give your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. God, again, we thank you for this moment. And in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Y'all stand. Let's have a time of fellowship, please. Good morning, Mount Olive. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. I'd like to thank the church for your prayers last week as we were gone for Deborah's uh, grandfather that passed away. We're so thankful for your prayers and, and your sympathy as well. I know you're in good hands, though. I've heard great things about last week and uh, the men singing. And, uh, and I thank, thank all the men in the, in the church for... Uh, uh, for your time and, and dedication towards the Lord and I think that was just the first annual so we're looking forward to next year and we'll continue to do this this month our theme is love and so we'll be singing a lot of songs uh, this month about love and probably hearing some messages uh, in that manner as well but today I'm excited to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you and he gave his life for you and he gave his life uh, on the cross of Calvary so that, so that we can all spend an eternity with him. Had the opportunity yesterday to speak with Brother Forrest and see him for a few minutes, and uh, he was so excited. He had the opportunity to share the gospel with his two uh, little blind-headed granddaughters. They're eight years old, and both of them gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was so excited <laughs> for that for that opportunity and I wanted to share that with y'all this morning just uh, so y'all could y'all could uh, rejoice in that manner so this morning I want to I want to start a service by singing uh, this is Deborah's grandfather's one of his greatest greatest uh, songs that he loved to sing 
and he was a church member for his whole life, and he almost made it to 99, but his favorite song was How Great Thou Art. So let's uh, stand as we sing. Page 217. Oh, how I love Jesus. <clears throat>
546, love lifting me, let's stand as he sings.
This morning the choir is going to sing the Gory Land Way. And once again, we're, we're singing about the love of Christ and when the love of our God. And it uh, talks about I'm in the Gory Land Way and get in the Gory Land Way. You know, a good attitude is, is contagious. So uh, we're excited this morning that we can sing about the Lord and about, and lo- about what we've got to look forward to, and, and uh, especially as a Christian here on this walk of earth. So enjoy this song. Such a blessing to be with you this morning. Glad that you're here today. We do welcome our guests. We're always glad to have you worship with us, and we're thankful that you're here today. As Jacob mentioned, our theme this month is going to be love, and especially as it relates to to us as humans and in our relationships, and that's where I want to begin today, and I'm going to be looking at Genesis chapter 2, so if you want to turn there in your Bibles, you can go ahead and do so. We recognize that God is the author of love, and there is no perfect love. There is no right kind of love without God. Uh, He authored that in this world, uh, in everything that he's done from the very beginning. And I love, of course, Genesis 1-1, as we all do, and we know what it says, and it, it stands as the thesis statement for all of the Bible. In the beginning, God created. God created everything. He created it from nothing. God spoke this world into existence, and 
Uh, he created everything that is created. The Bible tells us there's nothing that was created that was not created by him. And so we're thankful for this, knowing that he is the creator of all things, that he's the author of all things, that he loves and cares for his creation, and that God has given us a great responsibility as human beings to have dominion over this earth and to take care of it and to take care of one another and to have good, strong relationships of love. I've probably told you this story, but I'll go ahead and tell it again. In 2013, Judy and I got to make a trip to Israel. And uh, it was such a blessing to us to be able to go there and, and walk where Jesus walked and see so many of the great sights there in Israel. Um, we landed in Cana, Canaan, Cana, about the time, um, I guess maybe we'd been there a couple of days. And so we planned to do renewal of vows for those who were married and just have, just kind of celebrate that Jesus blessed the wedding at Cana and actually did his first recorded miracle there. And so we were getting ready to renew our vows. We were all standing uh, together in couples. And so we were just listening as Brother David Langerfield uh, led us in that. And then at the end of the renewal of the vows, we were going to kiss, you know, like, like married couples do. And I, I looked at Judy, and she was looking up at me and those big eyes, and I could tell she wanted to kiss me right then. <laughs> and I, I was kind of shaking my head, no, you've got to wait. It's not... Uh, time for us to, to do that uh, just right now. Yeah, her face is as red as her hair right now. So. <laughs> it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful ceremony though. It, it was a great thing and uh, love is something to be celebrated. I mean it really is. We live in a fallen world, you know, as we see in Genesis chapter 3 and Everything is not as God intended for it to be um, now because of that fall, because of sin in the world. And relationships are not always what they ought to be, what God wants them to be, or what we want them to be. But as Christians, we certainly ought to recognize the redemptive nature of God and, and how he, he has sent his son to uh, redeem us uh, from our fallen state. And though we still sin, we recognize that we are forgiven, we are cleansed, we've been justified, the Bible says. And we are part of God's family. I love family. I told you that from the very beginning uh, when I came here, that we are strong family people. Uh, family is good. You know, uh, I know sometimes we love our family so very much and we just can't get enough. And then sometimes, you know, we just we want to stand back just a little bit and we, maybe we get it on each other's nerves and that sort of thing. But we're still family. We're still family. You can choose your friends. You can't choose your family. And so we're family together, and uh, I'm grateful for that, grateful for how God has allowed us to be family and have relationships. Um, Marriage, uh, which we'll we'll touch on a little bit today and this month, uh, we know is not for everyone. It doesn't happen for everyone, some by choice, some by not. Uh, But still, um, there is the marriage relationship that that is so sacred in God's eyes that Jesus would go all the way back to the beginning to say, this is how God intended for man and woman to relate together. Uh, This is God's intention for marriage. This is God's intention for how we are to relate to one another. And it goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. So in chapter 2, what I want to share with you is just really a a couple of verses uh, as we look here. And I, I want to begin reading in verse number 18. And if you're able to stand, I'll ask you to do so this morning. Uh, If you would stand as we honor the reading of God's word. If you're not able to stand, just remain seated and follow along. And here's what the Bible says. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh." And then I would go ahead and read verse 25. It says, they were both naked, the man and the woman, and they were not ashamed. They were not because God had made them pure and they had no reason uh, to be ashamed in each other's presence or in God's presence 
uh, as well. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your precious word today. We ask that you might bless the reading of it and that you would speak to our hearts today concerning your great love for us in the relationships that you have given to us. Help us, Lord, to, to get the truths of your word today. And, Lord, to get them in our hearts and get them in our minds and get them into our lives that we might follow you, Lord, in a way that would be pleasing and honoring to you, that would be good for us and good for others. So we thank you, Father, today for what you'll do. And, Lord, I ask you just to speak. Speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can be seated today. I, you know, we look at verse number 18, and we see, we see uh, somewhat of the tone of the beginning of it. The Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It's kind of a, you know, uh, a statement that uh, goes against a sort of a negative statement going against what God has already said in creation. Uh, he took the six days to create. And in all that he created, he said it is good. In fact, at the end of chapter 1, he said the Lord looked at everything that he had made and he said, behold, it is very good. It is very good. Everything is very good. Uh, Hanging the stars in the sky, the moon and and the sun so that we might have light, a greater light by day, a lesser light by night. That we might have dry land as he parted the waters so that we would have a place to live and to build. And as the Lord created all of nature that we, we see around us, the trees, uh, uh, the plants, and uh, as he created the animals, all of the animals of the field and brought those to Adam to let him name all of those uh, animals. But then uh, the Lord said, you know, because there was not a helper found for Adam, he said, it's not good. It's not good that the man should be alone. It's not a good thing for him. And so God said... I will make a helper comparable to him. And that's a really good translation of it. I mean, I know the King James, this is New King James. King James says a helpmeet. And a helpmeet actually means this, but sometimes people get the wrong idea and they think that somehow God made woman inferior to man. As uh, Luther would have said, God could have taken the bone out of a toe and uh, therefore man would would have been... um, would have ruled over woman, or he could have take, taken the bone out of his head where the woman would rule over him, but instead God took a, a rib, a bone from the side of Adam, and formed that into a woman so that she would be comparable to him, so that she would complement him in every way, so that she would complete him in every way. And I want you to, I want you to know that that is the teaching of the Bible. And when Jesus goes back once again in Matthew 19, speaking about divorce and, and what God intended from the very beginning, he, he intended that man and woman complement uh, one another, that she was created to be that complement and uh, to be that helper for him that is suitable, that is just right uh, for him. And yet today there are still those who believe that the Bible somehow teaches that a woman is inferior to man, that man is supposed to rule over a woman with a iron hand and all of these things, and that is simply not true. As we've said before, God has a role for a man, and God has a role for a woman, and those roles are different. But those, those roles are the way that God ordained things to be, and they're not to be seen as one being uh, better than the other or ruling over uh, the other. So, uh, this helper. God said, I'm going to make a helper uh, that's just right, For Adam, someone who has intelligence, someone who has intellect, someone who has emotion, someone that has ethics and morals, someone that he can spend his life with, someone that they can work together and be together and experience a union that cannot be experienced among animals. And God made animals to procreate, of course, but man and woman as well in a different way. And in the way in which we, once again, can work, work together to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and to find good for us in those wonderful relationships that God has given us. What I see in this is God's desire to create companionship for man and woman, to be companions together, once again, to work together, to love together, to build together, to have family together. Uh, right now in chapter 2, we're talking about perfection, that is what God uh, had created that was good and that God wanted to continue. In chapter 3, of course, again, when we see the fall, we're going to see that 
Some of that's going to change, of course, and the relationship's not going to be all that God intended for it to be. But once again, we're striving for the ideal, aren't we? We're striving for the ideal. We know what God wants ideally for us, and that ought to be the way that we strive to be and to relate to one another in companionship. Companionship with one another, with husband uh, and wife, with man and woman, with our relationships even that go to our friendships. To know how to relate to one another in the right way, in the proper manner, and in the, uh, and in the godly, godly way. So God has created us for companionship, uh, to be together with, with one another. And I think that is such a blessing and such a wonderful uh, way in which God created so that Adam then would have a counterpart, uh, someone with which he can jointly serve and preserve the beautiful world that God has created and uh, so that they can once again uh, work together. So the narrator, which of course we know uh, Moses wrote the book of Genesis, explains that this is why a man would leave father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and that they would become one, one together. Boy, that's a, that's a wonderful thing, that one flesh relationship. It's not always easy to understand, but, but I want to tell you, it's a spiritual union that really plays itself out in a physical way. I mean, you think about it. We are, we are body, and we are soul, and we are spirit, depending on how you look, you know, either uh, as, as our life is a trichotomy or a dichotomy. I, I seem to believe that the Bible teaches that we are body, soul, and spirit, and so together... Um, we become one. We become one. And, and that union, uh, of course, comes together in a physical way, but it begins in a spiritual way as we recognize who God uh, places within our lives as companions, as companions, and especially, again, as it relates to husband and wife, man and woman, which, is, of course, is what God, uh, God intended for it to be. And so since man and woman started out as one, there's within us all this deep inner drive to be re- reunited as one. And only God could create that. Only God could create that desire that is so deep and that is so powerful that we join together to create a brand new family. The Bible talks about the family so much and so often. And when you see um, in the Old Testament, it talks about the sons of, Ju- of uh, uh, Abraham, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Jacob and his 12 sons. It talks about it in terms of families, okay? These are the families of Judah. These are the families of Issachar. These are the families of Benjamin. These are the families of Joseph. And so it's a powerful thing that God has created family through a one flesh union that comes together in companionship. And it works together, again, for God's uh, glory, God's honor, Uh, And so it's God's original design for men and women that we find that companionship and that we do so in the opposite sex. And and you know as well as I do today that uh, the world is saying, you know, it can be a man and a man, it can be a woman and a woman. But I want to tell you, God does create very deep friendships between men and women and companionships that way with men and men and women and women, but not the marriage relationship, Not, not the way God designed it from the beginning. Man and woman, God said, uh, would come together. And so we have this deep inner drive for that companionship, for that help meet, for that ally, for that support, for that person who is suitable. And I know um, in our own marriage, you know, Judy and I can both tell you, as many of you can, that uh, there are areas where she is strong and I'm weak. There's areas where I'm weak and she is strong. And so together God has made us suitable for one another. Uh, to be able to, to work together and to enjoy one another and to spend, be able to spend time together and love one another in that companionship way. But I want to tell you also, there, there is that tendency to distort God's vision of healthy uh, relationships. We, we have that tendency because of the fall of man, of course. And so um, we find all kinds of destructive ways, you know, sometimes to relate to one another and to relationships and to our spouses. And we end up frustrated when that happens. Sometimes we end up angry. Sometimes we end up isolated again when God desires that we come together for that companionship and that love and that enjoyment of being together. And yet because we're sinful and because we're selfish many times, because we take things 
in our own in our own way and do things in our own way, we often ended up end up without God's ideal uh, for us. And so, no matter where you relate to your spouse, whether you're dating, you're married, you have contact with someone at work and your extended family here at church, I mean, th- there are some who tend to respond uh, in, in the wrong way. In the wrong way. Um, if you watch enough movies, you might get the idea that you just find that one right person and then you'll just no longer be isolated. But that's not always the case. That's not always true in marriage. I know Judy and I talk about it quite often. Sometimes we get really busy. We get really busy. And, we, and, and even in our busyness, we're around one another, okay? It's not that we don't see one another, but the end of the week comes... And sometimes I'll get up on Friday morning and I'll just look at her and say, hey, missed you this week. And we've been together all all week. But we're busy doing this and we're busy doing that and we've not made enough time for one another. Anybody anybody been there? (laughs) We're the only ones, I guess. Yeah, Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. We all are there. I mean, it can be the same, you know, in a relationship with someone that you have as a good friend, you know. Um, you're good friends, but you don't get to see them as often as you like, or, uh, or you get busy and you're not, not able to contact them like you would like to and spend time together. So, you know, we, we recognize that. I mean, that, there are ways, lots of ways that we isolate ourselves. Sometimes we get, we get really upset over something, you know, and we, we kind of withdraw. And guys, let me just tell you, us men are the worst at that, you know. Something happens, we just kind of isolate ourselves. We don't really like to talk about those things, so we just get off in our own little world, you know, which I stay in a lot of times. And, and we, don't, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it with our wives. We don't, we don't open up with them. We don't let them pray for us. I mean, I mean God made them. God made woman uh, to be uh, a helpmeet to us, to be just right for us, right? And we're supposed to be just right for them as well. And so we need to make sure that we're, we're uh, getting things out there with one another and communicating well. You know, I know if you, if you look at the statistics, uh, probably it will tell you that the number one cause of trouble in marriage, divorce and all that will be financial problems. And uh, that prob- probably is true, but that might just be a symptom of, of a, a much deeper problem. And usually the, the deeper problem is lack of communication. And so when I do premarital counseling, before I counsel somebody about, uh, about coming together as husband and wife, I talk to them very deeply about communication with one another, communicating. Don't isolate yourself. Don't run away. I mean, that's exactly what we see happen with in Adam and Eve when they were tempted in the garden. She was tempted, Eve was tempted in and she disobeyed God and ate of the tree, uh, tree that was forbidden. And then Adam did the same thing. They began to ice. They isolated themselves from God and from one another. They were ashamed to be seen uh, now without clothes. And so they, they isolated themselves. So, so we must be very careful about this. And we must guard about this, guard ourselves about this, and, and not mess up by isolating ourselves. Another way um, we can... Uh, we cannot have the companionship relationship that is as strong as it ought to be is by fantasizing about the relationship at the wrong time and in the wrong way. I mean, there may be someone in a marriage that's, that's just hard, you know, that's just plain old hard. And I get that. And over the years in ministry, I've certainly um, counseled with a lot of people who've just been in a hard place in a relationship. And rather than face the pain of the hard reality... You know, they just escape into some sort of fantasy world. And that, that might be a fantasy world of looking at what they would consider to be greener pastors, you know. Looking somewhere else uh, in a relationship. Um, whether it be fantasizing about a man or, or getting yourself into one of those filthy books like Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. And, and begin to isolate themselves by determining that, hey, if I was just in another relationship, if I was just in a different relationship, things would be better. Folks, let me tell you, things can be what they need to be in your relationship when both are are loving God and serving God and putting Him first and then loving each other and serving each other. Now, I know you don't have control over your spouse and their feelings and what they do and what they decide to do or not to do. I mean, we don't. 
But we do have the power of prayer on our side. Amen? We do have the power of prayer. We do have God, what we know is God's best for our relationship on our side. We, we do know that, that we can do the things that God has called us to do individually in a relationship to make it right and to do what is right. And, and so in that, we, we certainly must seek God in that. And when we get deeply hurt by our spouse, uh, we, we must not allow anger and bitterness to, ca- to take control of our lives. I mean, you think about it, the modern women's lib movement, without explicitly saying it, has taught women to hate men. I mean, it has. It, it's taught women to hate men that, that men are, believe that they are better than women. And that bitterness and anger can take over. And I know it has taken over for a lot of people. It somehow gives a sense of control. But I just want to tell you, it'll never satisfy the deepest needs of your heart because God created man and woman to be in unity with one another. And once again, to recognize one another as equal in God's sight with just different roles that God has called us to and uh, to take part of. Sometimes it's hard to remember that that was God's original plan, that men and women would be helpers to one another, that we would be allies together, that we would be partners in something positive. But folks, let me tell you, it's true. It's true. God's word is true. So let me just conclude today by saying, uh, being a Christian, we know, doesn't take care of all the ills in society, right? It's, it's not going to take care of every hurt in your relationship, right? I mean, God didn't promise that everything's just going to be rosy and great and perfect, and we never face any heartache, any trouble, any persecution, uh, any trouble in our relationships uh, in any way. God didn't guarantee that. Uh, and, and so many people also... Uh, who are Christians think, well, because I'm a Christian, God's going to have that perfect person for me, and I'm going to be able to find them. And, and that's Christianity is not a guarantee that, that you're going to have a marriage and not a guarantee that you'll have a good marriage. But if you both are Christians and following the Lord's will, then you will have the kind of marriage relationship that God wants you to have. And I want, our, our young people today need to hear that, right? And they need to see positive relationships. I'm not talking about relationships that are perfect, that are perfectly sent. There's not any of those. But I'm talking about relationships where we are companions with one another. And where we don't isolate ourselves, but we work together and pray together and worship together and build a life together and build a family together that is good and right in God's sight and in the sight of others as well. What Christianity promises us and what God guarantees us is Jesus. Jesus. And that we can have a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus comes to us even in our isolation and he says this, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so whether that isolation comes from a separation, a divorce, or just within the marriage relationship being isolated, or even if we've been parted by death, Jesus comes to us and says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I will always be there for you and I will always be there with you. And if you'll give me... Whatever you have, if you'll give me your trouble, if you'll give me your heartache, if you will give me your anger, if you'll give me your your bitterness, I can give you peace. And isn't that what we all need as well, peace? The peace of God that only comes from the peace we have with God. He says, I can give you the power to forgive a person that's hurt you. I can give you the power to overcome bitterness. I can give you the strength that you need to go on day by day. The wounding of someone else on your life doesn't have to take over your life and cause you to live a life that that is without joy and that is without peace because the grace of God can help. God forgives us in ways that, that we can't even imagine, and I'm so thankful for that. God doesn't want us to be isolated, doesn't want us to be abandoned. He wants us to have friendships. He wants us to have marriage relationships. He wants us to relate well to people at work. In all of these things, the love of God is strong and can be strong in our hearts. And in that, again, we can bring glory to God. You probably all have your own story that you could tell, okay? But I just got to tell you this story about my grandparents, one that I know so well. 
my grandparents um, on my mother's side, my mother's parents, had been married, I don't know how many years, when, uh, when they passed. My granddad was in his 70s, and uh, my grandmother then lived on, and she was in her 80s when she passed. Um, uh, they'd been married, I think, at least 50 years when my grandfather passed. And they had some struggles. They had some hard times, especially early on in their marriage. They were both young when they married, and, and they, they had some struggles over some things that he, he had gotten involved in. But he got his heart and life right with the Lord Jesus Christ and made it right. And They had a good, strong marriage relationship. And I was around them a lot grow, in my growing up years and in my adult years as well, and I saw that example that, that was very strong. My, my grandfather became ill uh, sometime in 1987, and he had a really hard year, really difficult year. My grandmother was not in good health at all, uh, and, and yet she would do everything that she could to see to him and to take care of him. Um, they were um, in 1988 in January. He'd spent he was in the hospital at Baptist East in Memphis for a month, and my grandmother um, stayed down there that whole month with him. Again, she was. Uh, she was rather large, and she had trouble with her legs and getting around, and it was very difficult for her, but she stayed. I remember there was a week there where, the, where, where we got bad weather, ice and snow and that sort of thing, and we had all been taking turns going down there, staying, uh, my mother and my aunts and uh, some of the cousins, you know, going and say, but we had all gone home except my grandmother for the weekend, and that bad weather came. It lasted a week, and none of us could get down there. And, of course, this was the day before cell phones, and so we, you know, we weren't able to communicate very well. But finally, when we got down there, I'll never remember, go, never forget going in the room there to see them. And my grandmother, when she saw us, she just busted out crying. She said, we almost lost him twice this week. She said, I kept thinking, what am I going to do? I'm, right, I'm here by myself, and, and, and he's, he's about to go. And the Lord saw fit to give grace to allow him to live just a little bit longer. I remember we had been down all day on, I think, a Saturday, Judy, and uh, we went home. We went home that afternoon, and I got a call not long after we got home to say that my pop had passed. He, he'd gone on to his heavenly home. And my mother and dad brought my grandmother home with them that night, and I remember walking out the door when they pulled up to meet them, and I went out, opened the door for my grandmother, and once again, she began to cry. And she said, I didn't know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to stay with him and right by his side this whole time, but the Lord gave me strength to do so. She was a companion who loved her companion. Together, God had put them together. They were help, she was his helpmate. They were just right for one another. And she stayed right by his side to the end. Some of you have done that as well. God bless you for that. For the strength that God's given you to show what it means to love and be a companion. And not isolate yourself, but bring yourself together and learn how to forgive. And learn how to overcome obstacles and challenges when they come your way. And there's only one way to do it. And that's when you have Jesus in your heart and in your life. And, that you, and when you know you're a child of God, and God will give you the strength, and that he will not leave you nor forsake you, and he calls you to bring honor and glory to his name in every relationship that you have, then God looks and says, this is good. It's very good. Let's pray together. Heads bowed, eyes closed just for a moment. As we consider how the Lord's speaking, what he wants us to do in response to his word today. The love of God is so strong. God is love, the Bible tells us. And without that love, we wouldn't be able to love him. We wouldn't be able to love one another with a godly love. So today as we've considered that from God's word and how God created us the way that he did. He created us for companionship and and for love and, and to, to build our relationships on a biblical foundation the right way. I'm asking you today to pray for, uh, pray for your mate, pray for your spouse, pray for your husband, pray for your wife. Pray for one another. Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray together this morning. What a great testimony that would be to see couples down here at the altar praying with one another. For God to strengthen them and God to work in their hearts and in their lives.
those of you who've had a wonderful one flesh relationship, but that, that spouse is no longer here. They're, they're in heaven. I know today what you're doing. I know you're thanking God for the time that you had with them and that you'll see them again. And what a blessing to know that. To know that we will live eternally with Christ Jesus when we know him as personal Savior. And we'll have those perfect relationships like God intended for us to have in the very beginning. I'm grateful to God for that. I know you are as well. We look forward to that great reunion day. We'll all be family because we are family here and that will continue throughout eternity. Thank God for that. Praise Him for it today. If you're here without Jesus, then I'm begging you to give your heart and life to Him. The Bible says there must be repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for you to be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe in your heart. Confess him with your mouth. Open your life to him and call on him, and you shall be saved. Come forward and make that public, and let us rejoice with you today. If you're struggling with that decision, please come down during the invitation time. Let me talk with you. Let me pray with you. Let me help you from God's word. If there's some burden on your heart in your life that I can pray with you about as your pastor, I would love to do that. Be glad to pray with you and help, help you in God's word any way that I can. I love you all so very much, and I'm glad that we're a family together. So let's, let's rejoice in that today. Let's joy in it. Let's give praise to God for all that he is and all that he does. Father, help us now as we have this time of response. I pray, Lord, for those that are struggling with whatever it might be, Lord, you know. Whether we need to confess a sin and repent of that or it's a soul that is struggling about being Lord. He is strong in this place. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to be responsive. Help us, Lord, to open our hearts and our lives to you right now. For we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our hymn of response today.
Thank you for your prayers and your kind attention in the service this morning. Um, don't forget uh, all the activities that we have going on, and there are lots of those. I'm not going to go over all of those. I will just remind you that this afternoon uh, we will have a 4 o'clock worship service, but no fellowship here at the church uh, tonight afterwards. The deacons will meet afterwards, but 4 o'clock worship service today only, but no Super Bowl uh, fellowship here at the church this afternoon. All right. Again, to our guests, we're glad you're here. We hope you'll come back and worship with us again. Uh, we love you all and appreciate you, and I hope you have a great afternoon. See you back early this afternoon at 4 o'clock here. No discipleship training, 4 o'clock worship. Any, anything else before we dismiss? All right. Let's bow together then. We'll have our closing prayer. Mr. Billy, would you voice this prayer for us?